Hello students. In this part, we will be dealing with spinning of wool, weaving of wool, occupational hazard, and silk in detail. Spinning of wool. The fibers are straightened, combed, and rolled into yarn. The longer fibers are made into wool for sweaters, and the shorter fibers are spun and woven into woolen cloth. This is the process of spinning of wool. Can you see how raw silk is being converted into yarn? Weaving of wool. With the help of weaving machine, the pieces of yarn get interlocked at right angles to one another the woven cloth undergoes finishing crabbing and chemical finishing during weaving this is how the yarns are interlocked at 90 degree angle Occupational hazards of wool industry. So let's understand what is occupational hazard. A health risk as a consequence of a particular occupation is called occupational hazard. People working in the sorting department are at high risk because they may get infected by anthrax bacteria. So in the wool industry, the people, those who are working in sorting department, they can come in contact with anthrax bacteria and get infected. The anthrax disease is a fatal blood disease. Fatal means deadly. So this anthrax disease is a deadly blood disease. This disease is also called as sorter's disease. Wool production in the world. China is at the top in the wool production. It contributes about 20% of the total wool production in the world. Other major wool producing countries are Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, Iran, India, Russia and Argentina. India is at the 10th rank in wool production. In India, Sheep are reared in lower Himalayan region, which includes Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Haryana, Punjab, and some parts of Rajasthan and Gujarat. Wool mark. The logo of wool mark on woolen clothes is a symbol of quality to assure that the woolen cloth is made from pure wool. This logo is assigned by International Wool Secretariat IWS, which is established in North Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Now we'll deal with silk in detail. Silk is a strong but light and soft cloth having shimmering appearance. The silk fibers are also animal fibers obtained from the cocoon of silk moth, that is silk worm. Silk fiber is formed of two proteins, that is sericine and fibroin. These proteins make the fiber shiny and lustrous. The rearing of silk moths for obtaining silk is called sericulture. According to an old Chinese legend, in about 3000 BC, the bride of Chinese emperor 
Hunang D named Ji Chung Shi. She saw some white worms eating the leaves of mulberry trees in her garden. She noticed that worms were spinning shiny cocoon around them. She collected some of those cocoons. Accidentally, one of the cocoon dropped into her cup of tea. She noticed that the cocoon was actually made from a long thread that was both strong. and soft it was kept a closely guarded secret for hundreds of years knowledge of making silk reached india only in ad 300 through traders and travelers silk moths were also traded to european countries but they could not survive there due to cold weather however italy became silk center for western countries of europe China is a leading silk producing country in the world. Other major silk producing countries are Japan, India and Italy. Sources of silk. The best quality of silk is obtained from the cocoon of silk moth Bombyx mori. Its caterpillar feeds on the leaves of mulberry tree. This variety of silk moth is cultivated in China and mountainous region of northern India. Next variety of silk is Tasser silk. That is a wild silk variety. It is obtained from silk moth that feeds on oak leaves. Oak trees grow widely in India and China. The third variety is Munga silk. It is obtained from another wild variety of silk moth found in Brahmaputra Valley. We will see how silk is produced. The process of rearing of silk worm for production of silk is called sericulture. This is silk moth. Silk moth lays hundreds of egg on a paper. These eggs are kept in egg frame covered with tissue paper to maintain the moisture. Then they are kept in incubators for proper hatching. After 20 days, the egg hatch into very small larvae. These are about half centimeter small. The farmer place them along with fresh mulberry leaves. The larvae feeds on mulberry leaves continuously for six weeks. After that, they stop eating and are being transferred to a special cage. Here, they spin the cocoon around them. And a cocoon is ready in three days. In the cocoon, the silkworm is converted into pupa and then silk moth. When the cocoon hatch, the silk moth damages the cocoon. So that's why silk farmer dip these cocoon in hot water. And in this hot water, silken threads are pulled out by machines and converted into yarns. Life cycle of silk moth. The female silk moth lays hundreds of tiny eggs on the mulberry leaves. The larvae that hatch of the eggs are called caterpillars. These caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves voraciously and grow in size. Then a caterpillar is ready to enter the pupal stage. 
it stops feeding and its salivary gland secretes a fiber. The fiber is made up of fibroin protein and second is sericin protein. Fibroin protein hardens on exposure to air and it forms a covering around pupa. Whereas sericin protein act as the gum and stick fibroin fibers together. The covering of pupa is called as cocoon. Silk moth grows inside the cocoon. At the end of pupal stage, silk moth cuts the silken fiber of the cocoon and the young moth flies out. Silkworm life cycle. In this, two adult moth mate with each other and the female moth lays many tiny eggs. In the next step, a tiny black caterpillar hatches out of its egg. In next step, the caterpillar eat mulberry leaves and grows bigger and bigger in size. It goes through four molds. The next step consists of the caterpillar spinning a cocoon of silk thread around itself. Inside the cocoon, the caterpillar changes into pupa. Now, if we want to obtain silk, we unwind the silk thread from the cocoon to weave into silk cloth. And in life cycle of silk worm, the pupa change into moth, the moth comes out of the cocoon. And again the cycle starts. I hope you understood the video well. In next video, we'll be dealing with cocoon to silk and weaving and finishing of silk, occupational hazard and few questions. So for today, that's all. We'll end this video with a great saying, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Thanks, stay home, stay safe and have a great day.